Okay, so here we are on question two of the 2017 paper two, and it's a circle question. So the circle C has center zero, zero, and radius five units. Write down the equation of C. Now, I love the circle because it's pretty standard. You know, there's certain things that can ever come up. Um, one is to be able to find the equation of a circle. And I suppose ultimately, there's, if you look at it, there's two types of circles. Uh, that we need to do with one with center zero zero. No, that's supposed to be a circle. I apologize. And one with circle not zero zero. Okay. So you think about the formulas down here. Okay, the formula um, on top here is for any center. If h and k are zero because the center is zero zero, well, they get like wiped out. Okay, and you end up with x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, so in this case, you we know that that's it is center zero zero. So it's going to be this formula here. And it's a radius of 5. So you're going to input 5 instead of r. That will be 5 squared. And then you, now, one thing I've noticed in the user is they want you to actually convert that from 5 squared uh, into into the 20, in 25. Okay, so I'll show you this the answer here. That's an infographic uh, showing a circle not center, not center 0, 0. So the center is labeled hk for some reason. Um, the... If you put the values you've given for h and k, in this case 0, so again they go, you're left with x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, basically um, basically here, and x squared plus y squared equals 25 would be the full answer. Now I've got a bit like long-winded as such, yeah, but if you get used to these questions, it's, it's, it's bug standard. Now part B here, the diagram shows a semicircle, which is part of C. So you have a semicircle there, it's 5 units away from the center, it's a radius of 5. Now if I figure that out, I, you know, I would put it in, so radius equals 5. That should warrant you at least some marks, depending on the marking scheme. Uh, I might even write it here again just to show you understand that both sides, that's the radius, and the diameter then is 10, 5 and 5 is 10. So the point uh, P, P here, minus 4, something, we don't know what the, the Y value is as such. Uh, K is greater than 0, it has to be because the positive part of the Y axis uh, is on the semicircle. Find the value of K. Okay, so I think the answer is I actually forget to do it. Uh, yes, we have the, we have the equation of the circle, X squared plus Y squared equals 25. Okay, that's the, um, that's the same circle C. We then put minus 4 in, that's the x value in, put k in for y, and we end up that's equaling 25. So if you look at this is an equation of one unknown, therefore it can be solved. We'll solve for k. So f minus 4 squared is minus 4 times minus 4, which is plus 16. k times k is k squared, and that equals 25. So I've just simplified it. Then I'm going to leave the k squared on one side and move all the numbers across. The 16 was being added on the left hand side, moves across the operator, changes to the opposite. The opposite addition is subtraction, so the minus, the, and we often just say the sign ch change to is opposite. Into them with the sum k squared equals 25, take away 16, k squared is equal to 9, okay. Uh, bring the square across becomes the opposite, the opposite of squaring is square root, so k is equal to square root of 9, and the answer there could be, you could argue plus or minus 3, but there's no such thing as, in, like, um, we're told that, sorry, that we to ignore the, the negative value because we're told the k must be greater than zero. So it has to be positive. Okay. So that's B part one. Now we're asked here in B part two to show that the triangle ABP is right angled at P. Now I've put this in, this would not be on the same page necessarily in the exam paper. And there's multiple ways of doing this question. Like some are elegant, some are a bit long winded. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you prove it. Okay. Now, um, one, I suppose, I don't even know how we've done it, but, but even look at the next page. Um, if you can show that the length of this side here, I'm going to call it A, okay, and you can call that B. So if you can find out the length of A, the length of B, and you know the length of that is 10, so it's 10 units 5 from the radius here of 5 on, so it's 10. If you can show that the length of A squared plus the length of B squared equals 10 squared, you've shown that's a right angle triangle. Basically, you've proven Pythagoras' theorem. I don't know if that's how I've done it, I'll check the answer here. Actually, I've done it with slopes, okay, so the, if you look at this with slopes, if the slope of AP, okay, if you invert that and change the sign, 
and that is equal to the slope of P B, then there's a right angle there. Sometimes we might prefer to use the formula um, slope of uh, in this case what is the slope of AP times the slope of PB. If that if they equal minus one, then they're perpendicular. Okay. I'm using rise over run to find the slope. I could, but we now know that k is equal to 3. I could use slope formula. Okay, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, I'm doing this is um, 3 units up. And let's see now. We know that that's minus 4, so that's 1 unit there. Okay, so 3 up. That's the same thing as 3 divided by 1, which is 3. That's this bit down here. Okay. If we take this rise over run here, that's nine units, okay, from here across to here. And it's still three units up. Okay, now it's, and I suppose it's a negative slope because the rise is going down. Okay, um, so it's, it's a negative value. So it's going down three um, and across nine. Okay, so negative three over nine. That's the same thing as minus a third. So if it satisfies this equation here, now again, if you want to just look at that, they are minus one third is the same thing. If you invert it and change the sign, you would have a plus two over one, which is plus three. So that, that, that's one way of approaching it. If you do know your stuff, and this just makes sense, I would add in the more formal way. Multiply minus a third by three, that gives you an answer of, of minus one. Therefore, PB is perpendicular to AP, therefore right angled. Yeah, there's even, I think, other ways of doing that, okay? I suppose the two of D to be most the most common. Now part C here says find the area of the region which is inside the semicircle but outside the triangle. So if S is um, that shaded area there and this whole shaded area here. Give your answer in square units correct to two decimal places. Now this is a classic I mean, junior search um, question. We just if you have the area of the semicircle, take away the area of the triangle. You have the area of the shaded. So I've probably written that here in text. Yeah, the area of the space they're looking for, the shaded region, equals the area of the semicircle, take away area of the triangle. Okay, the triangle APB, the triangle there. So I'm going to break it down to find out the area of the circle. So the formula is pi r squared. The area of the semicircle is a half times pi r squared. I put the units in there. The radius of the semicircle is 5. Um, put it to the calculator, I end up with 12 and a half times pi squared units. Now, realistically, I could convert it to a number, but it would be a decimal. So it's better off leaving it like this for now, um, so you don't get a penalty for early rounding. Uh, 12 and a half times pi is just the same thing as 12 and a half times 3.14. So you can convert whatever you want. You don't have to do it now. I would suggest never converting to a decimal until you absolutely have to. So the second part there is the area of the triangle. Now, it's a right triangle. We'll just prove that. So we can use a half base by height. The base there is 10. The height is 3. So the half 10 times 3 is 15. So you're taking those two numbers away, 12 and a half times pi, you take away 15, and again, I can the calculator, we'll do the heavy lifting. Yeah, I'm now going to go decimal, that's uh, 24.2699. The question says to do that two decimal places. So I look at my uh, 9, okay, the 9 is greater than 5, so the number prior to it was up by 1, and that's how I get to the 24.27. That's very important to always make sure you put your units in, even though they don't necessarily have units in this question, they do say give your answer in square units, so... It's good to write. The, it's good to write the units in. Always go back over the paper at the end and go units, units, units. Make sure you have them in because it could be if you know one or two or three marks here and or there, and that can add up. So that's question C. Okay, so that's question two finished. Thanks very much, and see you on question three.